Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be part two of the study guide for the final. Uh, unfortunately, it's hard to see a lot of these things, so uh, you'll have to follow along with how the arrows look, and then you can answer the questions. So uh, for Q1, it should have lines that go away from it. Q2 has lines that go towards it, and Q3 has lines that go away from it, which I know is hard to see on the copy of the PDF. Fortunately, the copy center only accepts PDFs. All right, so our rule for uh, electric field lines is that the electric field lines go away from positive and they go towards negative. So since Q1 has it going away, it is a positive charge. Since Q2 has it going towards, it's a negative. And since Q3 has it going away, it's a positive. And this is what Faraday said. He was uh, trying to explain this to a layperson, any layperson, and saying that it would be the direction a force that a positive test charge would feel. A positive test charge would be repelled from another positive charge and it would be attracted to a negative charge. Uh, this one says, I'm missing the picture, let me scroll down to 27. Is a little bit off of the smoke. All right, this one we can easily see, and it says, What is the sign of Y and Z? Uh, since it's going away from Y and towards Z, that would make this a positive and this a negative. Uh, the next one says, If Y is 4C, what is the charge of Z? So how much charge they have, the magnitude of that is going to be related to how many lines they have. So the more higher concentration of electric field lines is going to represent more charge. So looking at this, if I count, the positive charge has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 field lines. If I look at the negative charge, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 field lines. So since they have the same number of field lines, it gives them the same concentration of field lines. So if this is positive 4, this one is negative 4. All right. Uh, the main equation for circuits was this equation that's derived from Ohm's law, which relates the potential to the current to the resistor only in ideal conductors. So very much like kinematics, this only works in things that are ideal conductors, ohmic materials. Uh, luckily for us, things in circuits are considered to be ohmic, to be these ideal conductors. Uh, v is our voltage. It's also called the potential. It's also called the electromotive force. That's what Faraday called it. It's measured in volts. I is our current. This is measured in amperes. This can also be a lowercase i. They kind of interchange both of those. Uh, R is our resistance. This is measured in ohms. That's a capital omega. And this capital R also sometimes looks like it's a small r. Uh, the V is always a capital V, but sometimes you'll see it written as uh, in this form. All right, so some easy, simple problems. So a simple circuit has a light of 6 ohms connected to a 4-volt battery. How much current is running through it? So looking at our V equals IR. I'm going to know that I is going to be V over R. And I'll give you guys every equation, so you won't have to have uh, anything like that memorized. So you're going to have 4 volts over 6 ohms, and it's going to 
be 0.66 repeating, so 0.67 amperes. Now it's letting me do the scroll with my finger. All right, in this case, I have a, a battery connected to a resistor, connected to an ammeter, and they're asking us how much current's going through the ammeter. So uh, current's the same in series. So if I can find out how much current's going through this resistor and almost how, also how much current's coming out of this battery and going into the battery, it's gonna be the same value. So an ammeter is meant to measure how much current charge per second, electrons per second, are going through without affecting the circuit at all. So this should have an internal resistance as close to zero as possible. So it doesn't affect it. We don't want our meters to affect our, our circuit at all. We want them to just measure. All right, so looking at B equals IR, again, my current is going to be this voltage divided by the resistance. And so since this is the current going through the 100 ohm resistor, it's also the current coming out of the battery, going into the battery, and going through the ammeter, because current's the same in series. All right, so if we add uh, resistors, if they're in line, like one after another, which we call series, we just add them. If they're in parallel, we have to do the one over formula. So in parallel, it actually makes the resistance less. It makes it easier for the charge to get through the path because you're giving it multiple paths to take. My example to you guys was if we were trying to get out of the room and there was a fire, if we could use both doors, we could get out faster than if we could only use one. All right, so I have three that are in parallel. Uh, R1 is 10, R2 is 5, R3 is 4. So our, our total is going to be 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Again, in our calculator, you want this bottom part to be in a parentheses. And so this is going to be 1 over 1 over 10. Oh, I shouldn't have closed that parentheses. Plus 1 over 5. plus one over four. And when I put this in my calculator, I'm gonna get that this is 1.8. So the idea is that a 1.8 ohm resistor would be put with this potential and it would have the same effect. It would be an unchanged circuit. All right, so I have a 24 volt source. I have a four ohm and a six ohm. I know the battery is coming out of it is 10 amperes. So that means that going into it is also 10 amperes. And I want to know how much is going through each one of these two. Uh, these two are in parallel with the battery. So that means that each one of them is going to get 24 volts. I know that voltage is the same in parallel. Current's the same in series, voltage is the same in parallel. That's that ISBIP. So I know that V is equal to IR. I is going to be V over R. So I have 24 over four, which is six amperes. And then I can either say, okay, I had 10 amperes. Six amperes went through the first resistor, that leaves four amperes for the second one. Or I could say 24 volts over six ohms gives us four amperes. Again, current isn't used up, current is conserved. So we have to account for all of it. And we can see that with the arrow, the same amount is leaving this as is getting to this. This does not provide the current. It provides the direction 
that it's pushed. That's what it provides. Uh, two identical resistors connected in parallel have an equivalent resistance of four. What would be the equivalent resistance if they were connected in series? So we're saying that uh, we have these resistors and they add up to four. I know what each one of them are. They're each, each of them are eight. Because I know when I put resistors in parallel that are identical, if I put two of them in, it makes the total resistance go to a half. If I put three of them in, it would be a third. If I put four of them in, it's a fourth of what the total is. If we didn't know that, we would have to look at this formula. This resistance in parallel equals one over one over R plus one over R. These are the same. So one over R plus one over R, and this is four, is gonna be two over R. And then I know that I can invert and multiply this. And so I'm going to end up that four is going to be equal to one times R over two. And so R is going to be equal to eight. Now, if they're in series, now I have an eight plus an eight. And in series, I just add them. So it's going to give us what our answer tells us, that it's 16. All right, this picture, I don't know what happened, but uh, this is what it's supposed to look like. I, I'm not sure if it was an update of the PDF. This is a conservation of current. So I have four amperes going into a junction from I1. From I2, I have six amperes going into a junction. From I3, I have 10 amperes going in. From I4, I have 15 amperes going in. All of these arrows are going into the same junction here. Coming out, I have 14 amperes, and I don't know what. But I know that I have to account for all of it. The amount going in has to come out. You do not use up current. We use up potential. So going in, I'm going to have 4 plus 6 plus 15 plus 10, which is going to give me 35 amperes. Coming out, I have 14. So I need to have the same amount going in as coming out. So that should have been 21. And on the paper, it said 18, but I crossed it out and put uh, 21 in. All right, again, this one is hard to read. think that this is 120 ohms, and I think that this is 220 ohms, and that's something milliamps. I'm going to say that it's 25 milliamps, and whatever our answer ends up being will be what the answer is. Sorry about that, but that's the, the PDF. As you use a PDF over and over again, it, it gets a little bit harder to copy. All right, so uh, these resistors are in series with the battery. So they're all going to get this current. Uh, so I can find out how much voltage this one uses up and how much voltage that one uses up. And then if I add that together, I can find out what the electromotive force is, which is the battery in this case.
So V is equal to IR. A milla is a prefix that's 10 to the negative third. Again, in our circuits, we never really have full amps. Like in a room, you would have that for your circuit breakers. Those might be 15 amps or 10 amps. But at what we did in class, everything was on the order of milliamps. So this is going to be 25 times 10 to the negative third amperes times 120. Yeah, we're not allowed to send, uh, and I got three volts for this one. We're not allowed to send Word documents, which don't deteriorate like this to the copy center. Everything has to be a PDF. So if you use the same PDF over and over again. All right, I'm going to do the same thing down here. Again, this is going to get the same current because it's in series. There's only one path for the charge to go, and all of it is going to go in that path. And it looks to me like maybe that wasn't a 25, maybe it was a 26. Because I'm getting 5.5. Oh, that shouldn't be amps, that should be volts, right? So this should be 3 volts, and this should be 5.5 volts. So if I add these two together, I get 8.5 volts. So across this resistor, I'm losing 3. Across this one, I'm losing 5.5. My answer says 8.89, so I'm thinking maybe this is 26 milliamps and not 25. But the same idea. All right, and then last one is a chart. All right, so... For a chart, you want to fill in uh, what you know. Uh, R1 is 30. So that's going to go in my chart for there. R2 is 10. And R3 is 15. And I know that my total voltage is 100. Our rule is we try to make it into one path. And then we follow our ISVIP. So to make it into one path, I want to combine these two guys. So these two guys, uh, the current that comes out of here all goes through R1, but some goes through R2 and some goes through R3. I'd like to get a resistor that takes the place of those two just, just to make my life easier. Kind of like when we do two charts in kinematics, we do an X direction and a Y direction chart. All right, so since those two are in parallel, I can replace them with what I would call R2, 3. So this is going to be 1 over, parenthesis, 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, close parenthesis. So I have 10 and 1 over 15. So I have 6. So that tells me that these two together could be replaced by a 6 ohm and not change anything. All right, so now I can get my R total because now this new imaginary R23 is in series with the only other resistor, which is R1. So this is going to be R1 plus R23. And so I have 30 plus 6, which is 36. All right, so now I have my total resistance, which goes here. Now I can get my total current, and then I'm in business, because then I can use my ISVIP to finish the rest of the chart. So I'm going to say that V total is I total times R total. So I total is going to be this V total over R total. And so that's going to give me 100 divided by... 36. So I have 2.8, 2.77. I'm just going to put 2.8. I'm not sure what the key says, but that should work. All right. So now that I know ISBIF, this is telling me that there is 
eight amperes almost coming out of the battery and 2.8 amperes going in. All of that has to go through R1. There's no other path for it to go through. So R1 gets 2.8. And look at that. I have two things in my chart. I can easily get the third thing. So V1 is going to be I1 R1. And this is 2.8 amperes times 30. So 84. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I start with 100 volts. This first resistor causes a drop of 84. I'm left with 16. Now, these two are in parallel. They get the same voltage. But they don't share the 16. They don't each get 8. They each get 16 because all of it needs to get used up over a total loop. So it's possible that some charge could come out of here, go through this one, and go through that one back to the negative. It's also possible that some charge could come out of here, go through this one, and go the other path. Both of them are possible. Both of them have to use up all of the potential. And so I'm going to put 16 in for both of them. And then it's just a matter of getting the current. So for R2, this is going to be I2 is going to be equal to V2 over R2. So this is going to be 16 divided by 10, which is 1.6. And then for the last one, we could do it two ways. One, all the current has to be accounted for. So if I started with 2.8, and 1.6 is going this way, that tells me 1.2 has to go the other way. Because so I have to get up to 2.8. It has to all be accounted for. Or I can say that I3 is V3 over R3. And so this is going to be 16 divided by 15, which I got to be 1.1. Okay, so these two aren't exactly the same. What's up? I thought that it should work either way. Well, I round it, right? So it's really, if I use the 2.777 repeating, I would get the same thing both ways. All right, guys, that's the end of the study guide, I think. Because we just have the answers. And I round it here, too. Uh, the last thing, there's some conceptual questions on magnetism. So keep in mind that something that attracts a magnet is also a magnet. Uh, our rules are that like poles will repel each other. Unlike poles attract each other. Uh, a changing magnetic field produces electricity. We saw this in light, so this should be pretty common with us. And that electricity produces magnetism, and these two are linked together. They're two parts of the same universal force. Uh, good luck on the final exam, and thank you for taking physics.